a very good morning to one and all myself dr rishabh gupta and in today's session we will be understanding that how we can calculate our descriptive statistics in ms excel so let's begin a survey was conducted among the urban professionals to understand their income pattern expenses and saving goals based upon the information given below you are required to apply the descriptive statistics to summarize interpret and derive insights from the financial data collected so information is being there relating to name income expenses and the saving goals of various respondent i need to create the descriptive statistics so in order to create a descriptive statistics first and foremost i need to activate or enable my data analysis tool pack so you need to click on file then you need to click on options the moment you click on options there is an option called select add-ins so you need to select the add-ins here over here and then you need to click on excel add-in since it's already been installed in my system so you may also scroll down from here as well so click on excel add-in click on go and then these are the things that are already been installed and then you need to click on ok so in this way i have now access to the various data analysis tool pack now let me calculate the descriptive statistics for that you need to click on data and then you need to click on data analysis and then you need to click on descriptive statistics click ok the moment you click on ok a pop-up window will be open which will be asking for you for the input range, group Y and various other information. Let's first understand that what it's all represent. So my input range represents the range of data. So I wish to calculate my descriptive statistics for all the three categories that is income, expenses and saving goals. So I have select the range of values from income till saving goals group y if i want my information to be presented in the rows then i need to click on rows if i want my information or output to be represented in the columns then i must select the column option so i am selecting this column option because i want my descriptive statistics to be presented in the form of columns label in first row since i have also selected my labels as well that is income expenses and saving goals i want this information to be presented in my first row the next one is the output range so under the op output options there are three categories output range new worksheet and new workbook if you wish to represent your output in the same sheet and somewhere at a11 so you just need to select the cell and it automatically gets reflected under the output range if you wish to represent your output in a new sheet then you need to click on new worksheet similarly if you wish to present your output in a new excel file then you need to click on new workbook since in this case i wish to represent my data in a separate excel sheet so i have clicked new worksheet option now there are four options that have been highlighted summary statistics confidence level of mean kth largest and kth smallest let's understand these options one by one the summary statistics gives you a complete set of descriptive statistics similarly the kth largest represents the largest value so here i have mentioned the one number which means the first largest if i want my data to represent the second largest then i may write second over here Similarly, if I wish to know the third largest, then I need to write the three number. Next one is the kth smallest, which represents the smallest value in the data set. Apart from this, there is an option called confidence level for mean. Let's first understand the meaning of confidence level. So confidence level indicates the range within which the true population mean is expected to lie given the sample data set. So let's click on it. The moment you click on it, Excel defaultly shows you a confidence level of 95%. What does it mean? It means that we are 95% confident 
that the true means falls within the calculated range and also based upon this confidence level i can also calculate my confidence interval that is the upper limit and the lower limit now then you need to click on okay the moment you click on okay your output gets presented in a new excel sheet now in this way i have presented my descriptive statistics of all the three variables income expenses and saving goals let's understand this descriptive statistics one by one first and foremost let's understand the frequency measures of count and sum these are my frequency measures so here the count number is five so it means that there are five observations in the data set in the data set of income column in the expenses as well as in the saving goals column alternatively i can also use the command of equals to count the next uh, component is sum it represents the sum of values of a data set for income the sum value of all the income is 24000 the sum of all the expenses is 11000 and the sum of all the saving goals column is 5300 alternatively i can also use the command of equals to sum now let's understand the measures of central tendency the first one is mean so the mean of income variable is 4800 the mean of expenses and saving goals are 2200 and 1600 respectively i can also calculate the mean by typing a function of equals to average now the next component is standard error so standard error measures the variability of the sample means in a sampling distribution of means so there is a formula for standard error that is standard deviation divided by square root n so in this case the standard error for income is 463 for expenses it is 254 and for saving goals it is 132 alternatively i can also calculate my standard error by dividing my standard deviation with the square root of n n in this case is 5 for each and every variable now the next component of measure of central tendency is median in this case the median comes out for income the median is 5000 and for expenses and saving goals the median is 2000 and 1000 respectively alternatively i can also calculate my median by using a command of equals to median so instead of typing all the commands separately what i can do i can i have activated my data analysis tool pack and in this way i got the descriptive statistics of containing the measures of central tendency frequency measure of variability and the shape of distribution the next one is the mode now the mode is 2000 in the expenses column and 800 in the savings column so again alternatively there is also a command for calculating the mode which is equals to mode so mode shows the maximum number of times the value is being repeated in the data set the next one is standard deviation so the, again the standard deviation is 1036 570 and 296 for all the three variables ex respectively alternatively i can also calculate the standard deviation by typing equals to sgdev so this is my measure of variability so standard deviation variance and range are the measure of variability the next one is variance again the formula for the variance is equals to var this is my sample variance the next one is the range which is a difference between the highest and the lowest value so maximum value is being there minimum value is there and the difference between the maximum and minimum value is nothing but your range i can also calculate the minimum value by typing a function of equals to min similarly for the maximum the function is equals to max the next one is the shape of distribution that is kurtosis and skewness we all know that the skewness indicate that whether the data is symmetric or skewed it is a measure of asymmetry of the data 
सो वी ऑल नो वी दैट वी हैव अ पॉजिटिव स्क्यूनेस एज वेल एज द नेगेटिव स्क्यूनेस पॉजिटिव स्क्यूनेस मीन्स वेन द डेटा इज स्क्यू टू द राइट एंड द नेगेटिव स्क्यूनेस मीन्स वेन द डेटा इज स्क्यूड टू द लेफ्ट इन दिस केस आई कैन ऑब्जर्व दैट द स्क्यूनेस इज नेगेटिव फॉर द इनकम वेरिएबल वाइल इट इज पॉजिटिव फॉर द एक्सपेंसिस एज वेल एज द सेविंग गोल्स कॉलम फॉर द इनकम कॉलम द नेगेटिव स्क्यूनेस मीन्स दैट देर इज अ स्मॉल टेल टूवर्ड्स द लोअर इनकम वैल्यू द लास्ट वन इज कुर्तोसिस so under the kurtosis measure check how heavily the tails of the distribution differs from the tails of the normal distribution so we have a positive kurtosis as well as the negative skew kurtosis positive kurtosis means that the distribution is having the heavy tails while negative kurtosis means that it indicates a flat distribution now the, there is a negative kurtosis in all the three variables thereby indicates a flatter distribution then we have the largest value as well as the smallest value again the largest and smallest value will be same as that of your maximum and minimum value if i could have select the option of 2 against the k uh, largest then i would have get the second largest value and the second smallest value respectively and the last one is confidence level so the confidence level is 1287 in the first case 707 in the second case and the saving goes in the third case based upon this confidence level i can also create my confidence intervals so the formula for the confidence interval is equals to mean minus confidence level similarly for upper confidence level it is mean plus the confidence level confidence interval is 3512 Till six thousand eighty-seven, I can also calculate the confidence interval that is lower and upper confidence level for the expenses and saving goals as well. So that's all from my side. We'll meet you in my next session. Have a nice day.